All right, today we are going to talk about the third building block of O-line success. We already talked about playing in a football position. We talked about understanding leverage. And the third one is mastering eye discipline. You know, when I was coming out of college and get preparing for the NFL draft, combine, all that stuff, I had the pleasure of working with a guy named Anthony Munoz, who is widely considered to be one of, if not the best, left tackles of all time. And as Anthony Munoz gathered us up, he asked us, what's the most important part of being an O-lineman? What's the key to being a great O-lineman? And we talked about being strong, having quick feet, um, you know, good punch, bending your knees, all these different things. And he's like, you know, you guys are right that all of these are very important. But in his opinion, he thought having a good target, mastering eye discipline was the most important fundamental that you can master. So eye discipline to me means that you have a target for who you want to block and you stay on it and you use that to your advantage. And eye discipline is used in, at every position. Shoot, you can say that it's used in every aspect of life, knowing which target and which goal you want to get. But just like um, a receiver has to look the ball in as he catches it and a batter has to look at the ball, see what he hits in baseball, offensive line, I would argue to say, is even more important. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. Now, as an offensive lineman, I'm going to bring Austin back in, um, you know, state champion, Elkhorn Antlers. But Austin's going to – I'm going to show and demonstrate on him uh, what a target means and how you want to know what your target is and be able to use it so to help you succeed in blocking, right? So the three keys to mastery are, number one, is you have to pick the proper target. So let's just say Austin is a defender, and, and we're running zone this way. So I know that I need to get play side leverage. So instead of saying, okay, I'm going to block him, I'm just going to go at him and hopefully attack him, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lock on to a front side target. Now, if he was wearing a football jersey, I would lock on to the front side number. And what I would do is I would lock on that in my stance, and my angle to get him would be dictated by where my target went. Right? And that's an, an easier way of saying step at a 45 or step at this angle. You are really going to block your target. It's the same thing in pass protection. If I'm a left guard or left tackle and he's rushing me, I'm going to take an inside target. So wherever he goes, I know that I'm just going to follow it and keep inside out position on him. And in doing that, in locking down that target, I'm never going to be fooled by head shakes or whatever it might be. I also will determine the angle of how I pass set. So I'm not setting to a man. I'm not setting to a certain certain um, place. I'm setting to a target. If he's wide, I'm going to set back further. If he's tight, I'm going to set tighter. Okay. But having that target allows your brain to know exactly where to go. Okay. So the first key is picking the right target. The second key is narrowing down that target as much as possible. Okay. Where most football players will just say, I'm going to block that guy, so I'm just going to go right at him without any real target in mind. I'm telling you, to, to narrow down that target to get more and more defined at your, at your skill and your craft, right? So if I'm a blocker, instead of saying I'm going to block this front side number, maybe I want to pick the peak of that number, and I'm going to lock in on that. If I'm going to um, do a zone that way, instead of, you know, on outside zone, I'm going to take, I'm going to block maybe the armpit target. On inside zone, I'm going to block maybe the middle top of the of the inside number. So you start narrowing down that target even more and more, you'll get better and better at making your blocks. Now the third key to mastering eye discipline is to lock in on your target before the ball snapped, or as soon as possible, because like you're pulling, you can't lock a target until you get out there. Lock on it and stay locked on it. I mean, literally, you don't have to look away. There is absolutely zero reason that you should ever lose your target. In fact, when I watch film with, with young players, and, and players of all levels, what happens more often than not when they miss their block is they lost their target. It's that important, okay? So when you lock in and stay locked in on your target, it really keeps you focused in on what you're trying to block and what you're trying to achieve. Now, as you get up there, maybe college or NFL, you're going to start having more peripheral vision. That'll just come with playing the game more often. But I can promise you, if you start with the fundamentals of locking in on a target, then you can add in seeing arms being swiped or linebackers coming or stuff like that. Start with locking down the most defined target you can, block that target, and as you get better at it, you can expand it out there. So as a reminder, the three keys to mastering eye discipline, pick a proper target, narrow that target as much as possible, and then lock in on that target and stay locked in it the whole play until the whistle. Okay? So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. Lock in on your target, and you'll have much more success.